Okay. Good evening and welcome to the Township Committee meeting of January 22nd, 2020. Ms. Borak, please call the roll. Raymond Delcor. Here. Maywoman Holmes. Here. Maywoman McCauley. Here. Deputy Mayor Lapani. Here. Mayor Thompson. Here. Administrator Ferreira. Here. Attorney Willard. Here. Okay, please join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be advised that in accordance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, that notice of this meeting was made by the posting of the bulletin board at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex, notifying the officially designated newspapers that this meeting would take place at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex at 7.30 p.m. on January 28, 2020. First up this evening is the approval of the minutes, uh, approval of the December 10th, 2019 regular session Township Committee meeting minutes. May I have a motion to approve the December 10th, 2019 regular session minutes. So moved. Second. Okay. Any comments from the dais? No. Comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call. Commandment Delcor? Yes. Commander Woman Holmes? Yes. Committee Woman McCauley? Yes. Deputy Mayor Lapani? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Abstain. Um, moving on to reports from committee liaisons, uh, Committeeman Delcor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a couple items tonight. I just wanted to uh, first uh, try an update on some of the uh, boards of commission uh, reorganization meetings we've been having. So uh, last night, as a matter of fact, I had the uh, youth services, and I'd like to um, congratulate Reverend Wolf on uh, being chairman of the of the youth services commission. Um, And uh, I'm sorry, the, the other one was the Board of Ed. Um, so uh, Dr. Uh, Swasson uh, was named the Board President, um, and Chris Pulsifer named the uh, Board Vice President. Um, so continue to look forward to working with those groups as a liaison for those organizations. Um, regarding the Willow Road Complex, some of you may have seen some activity out there. Uh, that's the former baseball complex that we had before we moved over to Mountain View Plaza. Uh, there was some damage fencing that had re uh, remained over at that site. That's all been removed and we're currently exploring some other options uh, for us to undertake at that field, uh, whether it may be some passive recreation or some other options in terms of, of uh, recreation opportunities for the public. Um, we had to remove all the fencing and the netting. It was a safety issue, so we wanted to make sure that anyone that was out there uh, was was not um, uh, in danger of uh, cutting themselves or having other other issues uh, safety related, uh, and we look forward to providing additional details as to what we're going to do with that property uh, as we move forward into 2020. I'm um, working with the Recreation Commission uh, on uh, figuring out what ultimately we'll do with that Willow Road complex. From the Health Department, uh, just a reminder: we talked about this briefly last week our last meeting, that January is Radon Action Month. The Hillsborough uh, Health Department is distributing free radon kits, uh, test kits to residents on a first come, first serve basis. Uh, only one kit per residence will be distributed and instructions are included within the kits. Results will come to the resident only, not the health department, and more information will be available in the Friday e-news or on the township website. Uh, in addition, uh, the health department is, of course, receiving updates from the New Jersey Department of Health and conferring with the Somerset County Health Department regarding the co coronavirus that is, of course, uh, all over the news uh, that's been affecting people uh, originated in Wuhan, China, and, of course, has been um, uh, spreading uh, fairly rapidly throughout, the, uh, uh, throughout other parts of the world. Uh, coronaviruses are types of viruses that can cause mild mild illness such as a common cold, but uh, can be much more severe as well, flu-like symptoms, and can also lead to severe pneumonia as well. Um, if anyone uh, thinks they have come in contact, uh, there is a two-week um, uh, incubation period, so you may not uh, note symptoms right away, but if you have any questions, um, 
the, uh, the New Jersey Department of Health has provided the following phone number uh, for any general public questions. That's 1-800-222-1222. Um, and uh, there's also additional information on uh, the CDC website, which is www.cdc.gov, and also the New Jersey Department of Health, which is www.nj.gov slash health. So um, very important uh, health information available both locally and at the state and federal levels. Uh, regarding our recreation programs, uh, registration is open for co-ed, spring boys soccer, and for girls ages three to, uh, for boys and girls, sorry, ages three through grade 12. Uh, all games are held on Saturdays at various fields throughout the town. And new this season, uh, we'll have the opportunity to have some play and or practice at the new Apex turf fields. Um, March 6th is the deadline to register, but we do expect that uh, we'll be able to, once, uh, once registration and practices <coughs> begin, uh, we'll be able to utilize some of those turf fields for uh, for practices. Uh, girls softball registration is also open until March the 13th. You can visit the Parks and Recreation website, which is hillsboroughnjrecreation.org, for more details on either the soccer or softball programs. And uh, any parents out there or uh, any other individual town that are interested in providing uh, coaching services, uh, we always need volunteer coaches for both uh, soccer and softball programs. If you have any interest in uh, being a coach, either a head coach or an assistant coach, uh, we welcome you to come in and help support our youth uh, programs. And you can uh, uh, submit information to the Recreation Department if you do have interest. And finally, one last item, the Sustainable Still, uh, Steering Committee for, for, um, for Hillsborough is introducing the Hillsborough Compost Challenge for 2020. Uh, can make a difference by, by uh, undertaking this challenge and pledging to uh, compost in 2020. Complete the pledge by February 15th to be eligible to enter the drawing for a free compost bin. Uh, this initiative is a gold award project done by Nikita Agarwal of Girl Scout Troop 60364. A, a pledge goal of 337 Hillsborough households would account for almost one ton of waste that we remove from every 100 tons disposed. So. Uh, it's a noble cause. We appreciate uh, all the Girl Scouts and their Gold Award project. So anyone that would like to um, participate in the challenge, um, please uh, either reach out to the township or we can get you the information for, uh, for Nikita. Thank you very much. Thank you, Committeeman. Uh, Committeewoman McCauley. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Just a few things from me tonight. And just a reminder uh, that there is the fire election that will be held on uh, February 15th uh, from 2 to 9 p.m. here in the multi-purpose room across in the courtroom at the township building. So just a reminder again, February 15th, and you can vote from 2 to 9 p.m. For public safety, we received the following message from the U.S. Department of Commerce Office of Security regarding the upcoming census. The census survey operations will begin on January 16th and continue through March 30th of this year. Your cooperation is important as a complete and accurate account, or count is uh, important to determine the number of seats each state has in the House of Representatives. It determines congressional and state legislative districts and defines how hundreds of billions of dollars in federal funding are allocated to more than 100 programs throughout, including Medicaid, Head Start, block grants for community mental health services, and the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, also known as SNAP. So it is important to uh, participate in the Census Bureau. Someone could be visiting your home. If they do so, they will be there to collect a response for the Census, make sure that they have a valid ID badge. They will have badges with them with their photograph, a U.S. Department of Commerce watermark on there, and an expiration date. They will be carrying computers, I believe, to um, take in the information for the Census this year. So if someone does come to your door uh, and you want to participate, please do so. You do not have to let them into your house. Um, if they claim to be, um, or if they ask you for anything besides this standard uh, questions that are, will be mailed to you also in advance, then it probably is a scam and you should not cooperate. In that case of maybe this kind of identity, you can call 800-923-8282. That's 800-923-8282 to speak with a local Census Bureau representative if that should happen. But just be aware that they might be coming around to your neighborhoods. You might see people walking through your neighborhoods. 
I know our police department's aware of that as well. If there are any concerns, just feel free to call um, if you run into anything that you feel is suspicious in any way. From the police, please be reminded, residents, that uh, protect yourselves from becoming a victim of personal property, identity theft, and vehicles. Uh, keep your vehicles locked at all times. I know we get into habits and we leave our vehicles unlocked, but there have been some um, thefts around neighborhoods recently, not only here but in surrounding towns, just by going through streets and unlocked cars, pulling out um, uh, things that are valuable in, in cars. So if you do leave valuables in your car, please lock them. Maybe put them in the trunk where they're out of sight so no one can see what is actually in your vehicle. Reminder from our chief is in the back of the room. Thank you. And for the Finance Committee, I just wanted to remind you again, it is time to license your dog for 2020. Um, rabies must be valid through October of 2020. If your pet recently has had the rabies vaccine and you wish to use the township's online dog uh, licensing system that we have, please email a copy of the, ra the uh, rabies certificate. You can, and Nancy Costa is in our township. Her email address is N, as in Nancy Costa, C-O-S-T-A. And Costa at hillsborough-nj.org. Your pet's record will be updated if you want to use that process versus coming in. So try to enjoy the convenience of this online system. It's there uh, to make it convenient for you. And make sure all your pets are uh, up to date. And I think that's it for me this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Committee Woman. Uh, Committee Woman Holmes. Thank you. Um, the first one is uh, the um, Municipal Alliance, which um, I'm a liaison to, and they will, there will be a presentation on Wednesday, Feb 10th, no, February 5th at the Hillsborough High School Auditorium between 7 and 8.30 p.m., and this is for parents and community members to attend, and it's called Vaping Me Crazy. Um, it's really important that um, parents learn what they can about this and become educated and aware um, that it could be happening in their own house. Um, according to the flyer for the upcoming event, we are the, in the worst public health crisis America has ever seen. With vaping and legalized marijuana, the culture, our culture literally grew up with pills marketed as a solution for every ailment. The threat to our youth is greater than ever. Okay, so if you're interested in getting more information on that, at the high school on the 5th. Farmers meet and greet. This is a really fun thing. I've gone to it before. There will be a farmers meet and greet on Saturday, February 1st from 1 to 4 p.m. Um, in the programs rooms A and B in the library. And they have lots of different items that they sell and it's really a good time supports our farmers. Um, I'm liaison to, um, to the Hillsboro Agricultural Advisory Committee um, that work to save our farmlands. Um, I just met with them this evening. Um, I'll also be meeting with the Historic Committee on Thursday. So we have a lot of good committees that are working hard to uh, keep our town with its quaint character. Okay, and I think that's that's it for me. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. I mean, Mayor. Deputy Mayor LePen. <laughs> Doug, Doug's good. It's my name. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple things. First off, um, since my last meeting, I did um, usher the uh, oath of office to our new chair and, and vice chair of the Board of Adjustment. The chair is Frank Herbert, and the vice chair is Chicky Haynes. Um, I did attend a couple of functions that the mayor will talk to, but I want to thank the firehouse number two for inviting me and also for the community day last Saturday, which the mayor will talk about more. Uh, from the building department, a couple of small things. Obviously, in the permitting process, there is an important part that needs to be filled out, and that's your email address. Uh, most people use that more than their phone number now, so I'm assuming most people will put that down. But um, for both you and the contractor though. So it's important that we have both email addresses. Um, the building department is now able to send permit correspondence via email and or through their SDL portal, uh, which can help eliminate delays and keep you updated on permitting status instead of having to f contact via phone the uh, building department. And also you can keep up to date with your contractor's uh, status. 
From the in engineering department, uh, I want to inform you that the section of Wartsville Road between Long Hill and Montgomery Roads, as well as the section of Willow Road between Amwell and Valinor Roads, which were due to be repaved last year uh, at the end of 2019, but were delayed because of the uh, winter conditions. These roads were repaved as soon as weather improves and the asphalt plant opened this spring sometime in April. So stay tuned for that. And lastly, from Public Works and their ongoing uh, cleanup uh, c campaign, uh, mark your calendars for the 2020 litter events. Uh, registration is on the event, bright, and community pass links. Um, you can check those links for more information uh, on the Clean Communities website. Any questions also can be directed to the Public Works Department at dpw at hillsborough-nj.org or you can call 908-369-3950. Uh, as always, Captain Cleanup, our new mascot, wants to thank you all for volunteering and being a litter hero. With that, I'm going to throw it to you, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. A couple things for me this evening. Um, first, uh, congratulations to all the newly appointed officers in both the uh, Route 206 Firehouse and the Woods Road Firehouse. I know you guys are here, so congrats to Chief Patton and to Chief Kazar for getting sworn in uh, this year. Uh, I was joined at uh, 206 Firehouse by Deputy Mayor Lapani and at Woods Road by Committee Woman Home. So again, thank you as always for the hospitality and the opportunity to swear you guys in. Uh, we'll have a listing of all the photos in the upcoming e-news of uh, both those events. Also want to thank uh, the Hillsborough Elementary School fourth grade class for having me in. I was able to speak with Dr. Antunis and uh, Detective Szymanski about uh, roles in government and how we all kind of work together on the different levels. Uh, kids had a great, great number of questions, mostly wanted to know how much I got paid as mayor, which they were very disappointed and I don't think they'll be running for office anytime soon. And they want to know if Detective Szymanski has a taser and if he's used it. So. They were disappointed all around pretty much, uh, but it was still a great event and I appreciate them inviting me. I uh, also want to thank Woods Road, uh, fourth grade. Uh, they had me on a uh, webinar, I guess, or, or a FaceTime a video today where they got to ask me a lot of questions, very similar questions, less taser talk, but still great opportunity and I thank them for letting me uh, speak to them about all the things going on here in Hillsborough. I also want to thank everyone who came out uh, this past Saturday to support the first community day at Hillsborough High School. Uh, Deputy Mayor LaPenny and I uh, both attended. This collaborative effort was sponsored by students of the Scott Callens Community Connections class. So uh, thank you to all the township staff, me staff members who supported the Community Connections class and all the different groups here in town that also attended and uh, had booths and also all the uh, high school students that participated that day as well. Uh, from the Mayor's Wellness, we'll be hosting a blood drive in conjunction with Robert Wood Johnson uh, on Friday, February 7th from noon until 5. You can see the Friday E News for details on how to register for that. And as always, you can stay connected with all the events and more via the Friday E News and Twitter. TV29 and the Hillsborough YouTube channel showcase our meetings and Hillsborough The Good Life episodes and Hillsborough alerts for traffic and emergency notifications. At this time, we're going to move on to proclamations. We ask that after you receive your recognition, please return to your seat. We will pause after all the recognitions uh, to allow you for, to depart at that time. So first up this evening, uh, we have, I believe, two individuals here uh, about the National Day of Racial Hearing. So if you guys could come on up. Hillsborough High School students, in conjunction with Safe and Sound Somerset, the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, Community Conversations, parents, and educators, acknowledge that the National Day of Racial Hearing on January 21st, 2020, the National Day of Racial Hearing offers people, organizations, and communities across the United States opportunities to recognize the need for racial healing and brings uh, people together to take collective action for a more just and equitable world. If we all dedicate ourselves to the principles of the truth and racial hearing and transformation, we can all bring about the necessary changes in thinking and behavior that will propel the great country forward as a unified force where racial biases will become a thing of the past. The Hillsborough Township Committee applauds the students of Hillsborough Township for their commitment to racial hearing, healing, 
and urges all citizens to promote racial healing and transformation in the ways that are best suited for them individually as a means to working together to ensure the best quality of life for every child here in Hillsborough and the world. So thank you guys for number one. So thank you for bringing this, uh, the proclamation to our attention to do this the, for the National Day of Hearing, uh, Healing. I appreciate you taking the time to email. So if you want to say a couple words. So thank you so much for um, the proclamation for recognizing this important day. So we wanted to speak a little bit to an event we actually hosted in honor of the day. Um, this was last week. We had people from all over the community, be it teachers, parents, um, board members. We had a ton of different people there to really celebrate the day and to have a conversation about racial healing and about racial literacy. And that was really what we wanted to do, is just bring people together to have those important conversations and start something um, that was bigger than ourselves. And it certainly was. We were one of, I believe, um, over 100 events that were in 40 cities and um, all over the nation. So we were part of something much bigger. And it was definitely a great success. So I'm going to hand it over. We'd also like to uh, gift the township with this book called Tell Me Who You Are, which shows, 50, uh, which shows racial uh, stories from 50 states of every state of America, uh, just giving stories about race, uh, just both emotional, very emotional, and just a great example of racial literacy uh, to this day and age, which we'll really think is impactful and should be recognized to this day. Okay, next, if we can get all the fire guys and gals to come up. Yeah, all, everyone, all at once. The Hillsborough Township Committee, along with the Board of Fire Commissioners, would like to recognize the top 10 responders from each fire company for 2019. The top responders served as examples of the highest standards of the Hillsborough Township Fire Companies through their heroism and willingness to help others. The top 10 responders from the fire company number one, Flagtown, are Matt DeSico, Gregory Kane, Joseph Shreve, Carl Scott, uh, Tyler Rorden, William Rorden, Tommy Lachowski, Michael Guzzi, uh, Jeffrey Singer and Eric, and I always get your name wrong. There we go. Right, just, sorry. <laughs> Top 10 responders for fire company number two, Route 206, are Bill Schaefer, Tom Schaefer, James Paterno, Rob Gilda, uh, Dana Lair, Kevin Danbury, Ryan Crater, uh, Carl Rawls, Isabella Calabrese, and Dan Edwards. Top 10 responders for car, fire company number three, Woods Road are Ken Wetzel, Manfred Nowacki, Richard Arts, Michael Murphy, Timmy Coyle. Kenneth Johnson, Charlie Narara, uh, Robert Hodesey, Tom Perlitz, and Brendan Harding. The Hillsborough Township Committee recognizes the top 10 responders of each fire company for their outstanding service and extends its sincere congratulations and appreciation for their continued heroism, commitment to the residents of Hillsborough Township, and for being shining members of our community. Thank you, guys. And girls. We appreciate it. Thank you.
As, as one of the fire commissioners and uh, firefighter in uh, Hillsborough, I want to thank all the fire departments and including Mechanic, he's up there he is, uh, for as top ten responders, and they all work very hard uh, getting these, making these calls, and it's tough to cover a, a town as big as this, but I got to thank all of them and the township. Thank you. that's okay. Uh, today we had an event, the Greater Raritan uh, Workforce Development Board in partnership with the Hillsborough Township and the Somerset County Library Systems uh, Hillsborough Branch offered residents the opportunity to meet with job developers to learn about the many services available to job seekers and employers here in Somerset County. It was a great opportunity not only for Hillsborough residents but Somerset County and Hunterdon County residents to take advantage of the many services and resources offered by the Greater Raritan Workforce Development Board. And I understand we have someone here this evening who's going to talk on that real quick, if you don't mind coming up, saying your name, and just telling us a little bit about it. So, uh, my name is Paul Grisella. I'm the director of the Greater Raritan Workforce Development Board, which, as the mayor noted, serves Somerset and Hunterdon counties. Our main goal is serving two constituents, job seekers and employers, and we offer uh, services to both uh, the employers through the state and through county services, and then uh, job seekers through a variety of different um, services, including um, individual training grants, a whole bunch of uh, career workshops and um, recruitment events. And one of our goals in 2020 is to make sure that people understand who we are and how you can better access our services. So uh, when your administrator approached me, it seemed like a good opportunity for us to experiment in a different way and rather than asking people to always come to where our services are offered in Somerville and Flemington to see what type of response uh, we get with this. We're also trying this in Frenchtown uh, as part of our Hunterdon County outreach. So we look forward to uh, being back here on the February 25th and March uh, 24th and to see how we can possibly grow this in the future. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for bringing you here. Appreciate it. Mayor, okay. Mayor, if you don't mind, I just wanted to mention uh, uh, Mr. Grisella and the staff have been a great partner here with the town for many years and all the things we've been doing with them. And it's really just allowing, as uh, Mr. Grisella said, to have it here at the library. And actually, I just went over to the job developer and they've had a lot of people just go through there in the past couple hours and sit down already. Um, so it's been great. Uh, Mr. Grisella is also going to be a, a, one of the guest speakers um, at our EBDC event in March as well. Great. Um, could you. I ask what time on February 25th and March 24th? 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Great. Okay. So again, um, thank you. At this time, we're going to take a brief pause to allow those who wish to leave to have the opportunity to leave. You're all more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, uh, but I will not be offended if you guys uh, head out. So again, thank you all for coming, and congratulations. Ready? Great. Uh, at this time, we're going to move on to new business. Uh, so we have public comment on new business matters not on the agenda. Seeing none, uh, we do not have any public hearings or ordinances introductions this evening, so we're going to move on to resolutions. Uh, does anyone on the dais wish to take any items separately? Seeing none, the only one I uh, want to 
just bring up real quick is the uh, number five, Brown Avenue. Uh, you may have read about it in the newspaper. Uh, Governor uh, Murphy had temporarily held on to the funds for Brown Avenue, uh, which will allow truck traffic to sort of exit onto 206 in a safe manner. This allows that process to start moving forward so that any of the truck traffic doesn't have to make a left out of the um, depot that's over there and they can start going out to Brown Avenue, which will certainly be safer for all the residents of Hillsborough and then when it takes uh, 206. So uh, we have a motion to approve the above resolutions. So move, Mayor. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? Comments from the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Commander Delcor? Yes. Committee Woman Holmes? Yes. Committee Woman Folly? Yes. Deputy Mayor Lapani? Yes. And Mayor Thompson? Yes. Uh, moving on to claims list 2020 01. Um, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? From the floor? Seeing none, roll call, please. Committee Mendel Yes. Committee Woman Holmes? Yes. Committee Woman Folly? Yes. Deputy Mayor Lapani? Yes. Mayor Thompson? Yes. And now may I have a motion to approve claims list 2020-02. So moved. Second. Thank you. Any comments from the dais? None. Comments from the floor? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 And now may I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Third. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> uh, we are adjourned. Thank you.